good afternoon guys yes yeah uh, piyush can you come up so my name is manu chandra i'm from a company called math logic um and we are going to talk about deep learning i hope uh, you guys won't go to sleep after lunch i'll try to make sure that okay uh, this is my colleague piyush he has worked me with me on the projects all the tough portions goes to him all the nice ones comes to me okay okay thank you so as i said uh, we'll be talking about the practitioner's perspective in deep learning we have been working with deep learning from 2016 15 16 onwards and for personally for me it's a very exciting uh, tools and uh, set of technologies uh, i think it's not working okay so deep learning right as you see has evolved over time and i right now it has given am um, amazing stuff performance on some real life stuff your talk your series of the world computer vision tesla all of those use some form of deep learning in some form or others right in terms of, and it has also surpassed human performance pretty interesting human performance on some task deep learning can do some task much better than human certain task not all the task we still are good we still have some li uh, some time on <clears throat> on our hand as practitioners of deep learning right uh, we want to leverage all of this we have leveraged these techniques in some of our computer vision and nlp projects but what happens is majority of my clients and i expect that lot of your clients also right the problem is for tabular data correct or most of you will have tabular data and still today believe me my clients comes to me with the tabular data the whole point was how can we use tabular deep learning on tabular data to get straight of the art performance what has happened today in tabular data if you if i ask you right which is the most used algorithm you guys have used guys anyone what is the most used algorithm xgboost right gradient based based algorithms right you this is the go to algorithm right believe me and it does amazing job for but believe me right when uh, clients comes to us they don't come to us with a, such a nice problem that we can straight away use they come to us with very challenging problem and for those problems what we have found right we have been struggling to use deep learning to get really better results so this talk is about some of the things that we have done over the years its research is out there we have just implemented those and it has given us some amazing answers okay uh, sorry it's right so as i talk we have focused on deep learning on tabular data for last couple of years right and our endeavor has always been from research to practice right 30% to 40% of our time goes in research we read papers sometimes we understand sometimes we don't understand right takes time and we implement in production to see on real life problem how can we implement it research is one part how can we implement on real life problems and get state of the art results right that's what gives me the kick right that uh, data science is all about so what we are going to talk about is self attention Uh, some custom loss function and neural architecture search right if i ask you in last couple of years right nlp based techniques right you must have seen have done amazing job right you must have leverage in your real life translators right i don't know who have children who have taken french or spanish and they struggle with teaching my i have a kid who learns spanish i struggle a lot to sometimes teach him spanish so what i do i use translator right and then your series and all of the stuffs right those most of them are powered by what is known as transformer models anyone heard of gpt3 right what is powering that it's a self attention based model it's a huge transformer model i think if i am right 175 billion parameters so transformer based models actually came from this paper that was came in 2017 came for nlp that was known as attention is all you need 2017 google uh, research came out with this paper transformational paper transformational right it's pretty much changed everything it started with the uh, nlp but it's also getting leveraged in areas of computer vision right vision transformers and everything what we did was there was a research which came which said you can use this attention based model 
you can use this attention maze model in in tabular data and that was essentially we did that so we applied this attention based models in tabular data and what is attention models it's pretty simpler right you input something you get multi ad attentions and all of those things i'm not going to bore you with the technical but it's a very very powerful stuff it understand the relationship between the sequence of stuff right but what interesting part is that you can use this attention model or transformer encoder block in the in your tabular data right so let's look at it what we did what piyush did right so we had a client which has a multi class multi level problem tabular data multi class multi level problem more than 100 classes right not a typical job you can typical project that you can solve with your gradient based boosting or your normal machine learning algorithm it makes life pretty tough so what we developed was we use that research which has come and made a custom model custom attention based model so our base model was already a deep learning model and what we did was we made a novel attention based model so what we did so let's look at it some interesting thing our earlier model has 10000 input features right so it's not a small model by any chance it's a 10000 features that we had our attention model has less than 10% of that has less than only 1000 features less than 1000 features that's it 1000 features it was much less than that believe me right and it's a, a project that we did for a client the parameters as somebody you understand in deep learning in the normal model was 7 million right not a small model right 7 million in the attention model it was less than 0.5 million you can look at the factors by by huge factor this model is small this model is less complex and our performance right the what we wanted to work on the original model we got around 13 to 14 percent f1 right people will say it's a low f1 but that's in real life what happens because it's a very low event rate problem <coughs> on attention model we got almost 50 percent jump with less features with less parameters and we got a more than 50% jump right very good results and if you look at it there are more advantages we can put in production very very fast our scoring is much faster right we don't have a huge model to put in this model is faster to train right and is less complex and believe me guys what we put was just the first generation of it our more research has shown that if we make it little more complex little more complex the results can go up another 30 to 35% more 30 to 35% more on this 20% 21% so what is showed was right <coughs> there were a lot of research that was getting done to use deep learning for tabular data right one of the papers that came was i think 2018 there was a paper called self uh, normalizing neural net there was a paper on selu activation function there was a lot of research on activation functions and different thing but when people applied this attention model simple research and can lead to substantially good result substantially good result so that was very amazing and this just started with a fluke saying that okay this paper has come up can we look at and can we implement for our client yes to do that yes there were a lot of work that was done to convert these 10000 features to less than 1000 features but when you do do that work right <coughs> rest of the results were pretty sweet okay uh along with that guys most of the time when we train a network right when we train models everything right for classification what is the most used parameter that you look at the parameter to assess model sorry sorry cross entropy is you train it but i'm saying what you use to assess the model auc very good auc right we use it a lot so neural networks are generally trained by minimizing loss functions and most used loss function as all of you said is cross entropy for classification and mean square error for regression but believe me there is not a one to one correlation between cross entropy and let's say the measures like roc f1 precision recall which we use to assess our models and tell our client right these are 
these cross entropy and everything can be calculated at a one observation level, but these functions ROC, AUC, F1 score, precision recall are calculated globally, means for a whole data set. Yes, you can average the cross entropy and everything, but you cannot calculate F1 score for one observation, correct? You cannot calculate ROC for one observation. There was a research which came, right? Not many people looked at that paper, which actually said, let's train a neural network with objective function as, let's say ROC, precision, recall. There was a paper actually which came a uh, long time back. So research talks about, about different loss function, some global loss functions that we can leverage to train the models and which was suited and there were other loss functions that we also tried, but it was pretty interesting, global loss function. Our objective is to maximize ROC, we will train with actually maximizing the ROC or F1 or precision or a recall. Very, uh, so we <coughs> tried that, right? When you're working with a client, right? There's always an endeavor to give better and better results. So what we did? For another client which has a binary classification problem, increasing recall was very important. You increase recall, you increase the bottom line. Correct? Simple, right? You reduce the loss. Why do we do analytics? We only do analytics for two reasons. Increase revenue and decrease cost. That's it. So just, uh, I believe in that, right? We only do for those two things. So increasing recall was directly linked to increasing the revenue, right? Or profits. So with same data and architecture, so everything remained the same, same training data, same test data, right? We leverage the custom loss function, which said precision, but give me higher recall. Keep the precision as same, increase the recall. So we use that. So our cross entropy loss gave us a <coughs> precision of 50%, and a recall of 68%. <clears throat> but when we use that global loss function, we got a precision of 50%, same as the other one, but the recall went up by another to 74%. Even increasing this by 10 to 15% takes a lot of effort and using this uh, global loss function did the trick, right? We have generally don't read research, but if you read it, you apply it for a client, Sometimes it gives amazingly good results. Okay. <clears throat> Last, right? A neural architecture search. The biggest problem in deep learning is which architecture to use, right? So most of the time, getting the right, right architecture is always a challenge, and it is generally based on analyst choice. Three layers, five layers, ten neurons, fifteen neurons, relu, gilu, silu, all of ilu, all of those stuff. Okay. Right, it's a analyst choice, correct? Right, but neural architecture search, this field has been pretty <coughs> interesting from 2017-18 onward, helps us in getting possible candidates which can help us to create better architecture. We have been working with this for some time and it's a, it's a mixed bag result, but lately what has happened is algorithms have become better, right, and easily to run, else it used to take a lot of time to run. So our experiment has shown that in some cases, architecture which is generated by NAS can outperform human generated networks, right? Research says that it does. In practice, it took us a while to figure out and it started to do that for us. Okay, for example, oops. For example, we are again at a multi-class problem, right? NAS influence, so we did not say NAS gave us the whole algorithm. We got an algorithm architecture from NAS, leveraged it. So we, I, that's why you say NAS influence network gave us a much better results. For we, it has a three class problem, right? And if you see for the bottom two classes, the result was same. But for NAS influence, right, your F1 increased by a 20 per, 30 percent, okay, which gave us a much better incremental advantage, okay. So you have to try out, that's what I said, practitioner's perspective. Once you try out the different research, keep an eye, keep your eye open on those research and you will find that sometimes, a lot of times you will get something which can give you incrementally very good results. So attention based models, right, very quickly has given us a very different way of modeling tabular data with less number of features, with less number of parameters and giving much better results. Custom loss functions, 
gives us a method to optimize what we really want to maximize or uh, <coughs> what is our business objective, ROC, F1, precision recall, etc. And NAS definitely helps us in getting the right architecture, at least give us a direction and give us little more options than the analyst choice. Okay, guys, thank you for listening to me.